Here is a simple chat. You can open it, close it and send messages. It isn't too difficult to set up, there are just a lot of events, because it's a network thing. We'll start off by creating a new widget blueprint, WChat. My version will consist of a border with a vertical box in it, listing a scroll box for messages and a text input field at the bottom, where you will type your message and send it by pressing enter. Both the scroll box and the text input field must be set as variables and named. This way we can use them to send messages and add received ones to the chat. Before we attempt at sending anything, let's first display this chat widget in the player controller. Here we'll need a new custom event called create chat widget and set to run an owning client with replicated option enabled. Here our chat widget will get created and displayed on the screen using add to viewport. We'll also save it for later in a new variable. If we call this event on begin play, it will display our chat widget. Next, let's make an event that will show our chat window when we press enter. This one doesn't need to be replicated because it's running locally. For now, it will only allow us to use our mouse to click on the chat input box and write something in. Here we want to set input mode to focus on both the game and the UI, where UI is our chat widget. Then we should also show the mouse cursor. We will use enter to call that event. Mine was a bit occupied with a small bit of code, so I had to replace the old key with T to be able to use enter here. Typing in the input field works fine, so let's write the part that sends messages. We want to send messages when pressing enter, which can be handled with an onText committed event from my message box input field. Commit method is an enum that can be one of four possible values. We want to send only if we pressed enter, so continue on on enter. Next, we shouldn't send empty messages, so check if the text bin isn't empty. We could write all other events for sending messages here, but because widgets run locally, replicated events don't work. That's why we will need to put it in the player controller. The first event will send information about the sender's name and the message to the server. To run it, we must cast to our player controller blueprint using get owning player as the object, which is also the player controller that owns this widget. Set event to run on server with reliable on. Then add two string input parameters for the sender's name and the message. Because this event will run on the server, it means we can get to the game mode where we can access all players and notify them to add a new message. Let's go to our game mode, which already has a list of players that is filled each time a new player joins on on post login event. Here we'll need the second event, which will loop through that list and let each one of them know to add a new message. This means we'll also need a third event in the player controller, add message to chat set to run an owning client with reliable enabled. Of course, this one will require sender's name and the message as well. Back in the game mode, we can now call this event for each player. We also need to fill the sender and message inputs, which will be passed through the send messages to everyone event. Now let's go back to the player controller blueprint and add the server send message event, which happens on the server. We will cast to the game mode blueprint call that send message to everyone event and pass sender and message information to it. Once everyone's running add message to chat, they should also take their chat widgets and call another event inside of them, which will create a new message line from the sender and message parameters and add them onto the messages list scroll box. So on calling add message to chat, we fire that add message onto messages list event from the chat widget. We need to make sure that sender and message parameters continue traveling back to the chat widget. What we need now is that message widget blueprint. Inside, replace the default canvas panel with a text component. The text should be formatted so that it says the sender, followed by a semicolon and the message. But first, we need two new variables for passing information about the sender and the message again. These two will be strings with instance editable and expose and spawn enabled. 
Then we take those two and using a pen we put them together with the semicolon in between. Now if you create a chat message widget, those two new variables should show up on the create widget node. Connect them and lastly add the message widget onto the messages list as a child. Let's go back to the beginning and fill in sender and message values. The message is the text we typed in the input box which is available as a pin on the onTextCommitted event. The sender's name is the one that's owning this widget. From the getOwningPlayer node which returns a player controller seeing this chat widget, we can get the player state and get the sender's name from there using getPlayerName. Let's walk through the whole process of sending a message to all players in the game. In the chat widget we cast the player controller that has an event which will send the information to the server side of the player controller. As the server now we use the game modes to access all players and tell each one of them to receive the information in their player controllers. In clients player controllers each one adds a new message to their own chats. And finally in the chat we add a new message line to the chat scroll box with all correct information. And our chat works. You could call it finished as it is, but it's a bit annoying having the message still in the input field after sending it. Fixing it is very straightforward by just setting text of the input field to an empty text using set text. This is it for part 1 of this video. We'll improve its functionality even more in the next one, which will also be the final one for this chat tutorial. See you then.